Okay, Kenya, let's uh, let's see what you got here. I know you're having a little bit trouble with this section here, so let's just see what your site looks like. So right now you have the text above here and you got the images below. I think actually earlier you had that up higher. I think you might have changed that since I originally looked at it. But this is what the original looks like. So you got the text actually over the images and then these images slide up over the image above it. So let me uh, show you a couple different things I did to make this work. The second one is actually an easier way. The first way I did it is probably more accurate to the original, but the problem is it's got a little bit more CSS code than I would have liked to have shown somebody, but I'll, I'll show it to you anyway. Um, so let's just go down to the bottom one here and let's take a look at this. So all I have here is we're going to do everything within the columns inside the row itself. I have basically everything set inside the row to zero. Let's see if we can get that to open up. Okay. So I got, I got only got that top margin there just to push it down for some separation, but otherwise it's a hundred percent with top, bottom, left, right. Everything is at zero. And then what we're going to do is actually, let me just rebuild another one here just to show you. So we'll come up and we'll grab the words and we'll clone this. And then let's drag that down into the bottom part. And then what we need to do is we need to add in an image element. So we will do that. And we will grab that image and we will drop the same image in there. And it's right there. So we got our image and we got our text. Now, the first thing I know I wanna do with this text is I wanna bring it down 20 pixels so that it uh, comes down below the top of the image. Otherwise it's gonna be right at the top. So we're gonna set that as 20. And then what we need to do is we need to bring this image up so that it is above this. And we will just come into our settings and if I do believe I had it right, I think that was minus 80. Yeah, that seems like too much. Let's try minus 50. That's probably right. Now you see that the words went behind it. So we need to go find that in, or the uh, text element again. So we'll come into elements and we'll click on manage and we'll come down and right here is that element we're looking for. You can even see that the blue was around the back. So let's come in there. Let's grab the CSS ID selector for that and we will copy it and we'll go into our custom CSS. And at the very bottom down here, this is the only CSS right here for the section that I'm working on. All the CSS above it is for the other. And because I already did this exact same thing for the first column, I'm just gonna do it here for the second one. And you put in two elements together into your selector by just putting a comma in between them like that. So let's click on that. So here we are, we are outside of here. And then let me go back in here so I can tell already that, let me see here, I had the subheadline element had zero margin. Okay, so let's go back in here. Did this 10 minutes ago and I forgot already how I did it. So let's come back in here and make that zero margin. Because everything else we're going to do here is going to be inside of the column itself. So let's go into column number one and take a look at what I all did in there. And here we have a top margin of 35, bottom of 15, and left of 15. So let's come back into our column number two. So we'll come up to the top, click on column, column two, and we will make this... 35, 15, and 15. Now we still have a problem. Well, first off, one of the problems is we gotta change that background color. So we'll come back into second column and the background color is what's going to make what appears to be a border around the outside. And there's the background color right there. If it sticks, I was having trouble getting, yeah, I can tell it's not, it's not picking up the right color. Let me see here. Yeah, well, you get the idea. It's not wanting to pick up the color for some reason, but now we still have an issue. So what did I do here? Let's take a look. Um, we have top margin there, okay. 
and let's check the image. There we go. Top margin negative 70. That was it. Okay. I was off by 20. I knew I had 20 pixels in there, and I was right at the at the very end. Okay, we'll grab the image, not the text, and we will make this minus 70. That will close up that additional gap at the top. And then we come back out and click out, and then it's in there perfectly. So it just takes a minus 70 there. You don't have to have any anything on the image itself. Uh, just do a minus, I'm mean, sorry, on the text itself. There's no margin at the top of the text. It's just all of the margin is the top of the image, and then it closes it up. And like I said, for some reason, it was, it's jerking me around and not giving me the right background color there. So now let's take a look at the way I did this up on top. There's two big things that I did. First one was the main image itself. And I went to the original site and I right clicked and I inspected it and I found out how tall is the total height of this image. It's very important to find out that total height. So we went in then and went into the CSS, grabbed the CSS ID selector, of course, for that section because I didn't say this, but what I did is I came in and I made that image the background image of the section. So that's that's where that image is residing. It's not uh, anywhere else. So it's a background image of the section. And then if you come into your custom CSS, what we did here is we took that section and we knew that it was a height of 667 pixels. So we put in the height and then we said background position center so that the picture is centered directly in the middle of the element. So let's uh, just change this out and let's say we did picture um, uh, background position top. And if we change that to top, you see it's aligned at the very top and we get a whole bunch of the image we didn't want. We want the image centered right in the middle because that's the way the original was. And plus it just looks a heck of a lot better. So we will go center again. And then the cover that just says that take that image and just cover the entire space available with it. And so it covers the whole area. So that's how we get this image here perfectly centered right in the middle. Now, I thought I was going to be able to do exactly the same thing with these images down here, but I wasn't. And so let me show you what I did down here. There, there is only one element inside of each one of these columns, and it is this text element. The image itself is a background image, and that's in each one of the columns. So if we come into the column, we click on that, we go to our first column, and you can see we have the background image set right here. And you always set it to no repeat when you're doing background images. The same thing I did up at the top. So it's set as no repeat right here. And then we put in some margin, uh, just, or I'm sorry, some top padding just to be able to push that text element down a little bit. Now where the problem comes in here is you got to do the same thing as before. You got to come in here and you got to go, okay, how tall is this element? And normally that's enough, just figuring out how tall the element is. Well, in this case here, I also had to put in the width and I had to put in the margin to be able to center it. So let me show you where that code is. So we'll come into our custom CSS. We'll take a look at this. So first off, we set the height just like we did up on top here. Then we had the background position of top. And again, I found that that looked best uh, to have it positioned at the top instead of the center. And we also did background size of cover, which I don't think was, was even necessary, but I put it in there anyway. And then what I found is I had to put in the width. And what ClickFunnels wants to do is it wants to set the width automatically. And so I had to put in the important term here at the end in order to get it set. Well, when I did that, what it was doing, and let me just comment out this, what it was doing is it was putting it to the left. It wasn't centering it, even though I'm telling it to do all those things. And I tried background position center and that didn't work either. So what I ended up having to do was an old CSS trick um, where you just put in margin zero pixels auto. And the zero pixels means give us zero pixels at the top and the bottom of the element, but then on the sides, 
auto margin. So auto margins basically means split the difference. So it just splits whatever extra room there is, puts equal amounts on either side. And again, in order to get it to work, I had to put in the important tag because ClickFunnels kept trying to override it and put in zero margin. So that's kind of a long, complicated um, answer here, but that is two different ways that you can set this up. I think, uh, oh, and the only other thing that we did here was a negative top margin on this section of 130 pixels just to be able to pull these images up over the top. And so, like I said here, let's take a look at what it looks like in a preview. And here is, is what we got. Of course, obviously, I didn't fill out the whole thing. I just wanted to work on this part that you had. So if you got any questions on that, feel free to reach out to me. Have a great day.